All right, guys, to get some NCAA basketball picks, props for Sunday, March 17th, slated games. Trey, let's take a look at the leaderboard. How have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went 1-0 and in my game pick. I gave out Western Kentucky minus 2.5 going up against UTEP. And Western Kentucky, I feel like they controlled this game the entire way. There was a little bit where they uh, were behind, but they immediately turned it up and took the lead and didn't, with, uh, didn't look back, and they ended up winning by 7 points. So we cashed pretty easily. I'm not going to keep this momentum going to the tournament, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah, and I gave out Texas A&M plus two and a half going up against Florida. I was on a hot streak to get back over 500. Now I'm as cold as it gets. Uh, whenever you're cold, you're cold. Nothing works out for you. We were up 40 to 22 in this game late in the first half. We ended up losing by five. So uh, Florida did make the comeback against Texas A&M. We go 0 and 1 there. Trey, let's go to the props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went 1 and 0 here as well. I gave out Zach Eady. Over 38 and a half PRAs versus Wisconsin. ED, he finished with 42 PRAs. He dominated. Like I said, I expect him to get 30 and 10. He got 29 and 11 either way. Yeah, and I gave out Vlad Golden. Uh, there's a reason I don't give out unders. He had 17 points in very early in the second half. Uh, I had under 16 and a half. Not sure, not sure why FAU played the way they did uh, because Temple ended up beating them. So shout out, Temple. Trails go to group play. I finally get on the board. We both took the Huskies, minus nine and a half. They won this game by 13 points. Low-scoring game. Marquette, they gave everything they have, but they're a little bit injured. Uh, they're going to be a scary team come tournament time. Shaka Smart, he's got something up his sleeve. I think Marquette might make a run there. But UConn, domination station in this one. Up, uh, won the game by 13 points. So we go 2-0 and here on the day. Trey, let's go to our group play for tomorrow. How about a little bit of love for the Ivy League? Brown University in the championship game going up against the number one seed, Yale. Yale is minus six and a half, over under 133 and a half. I'm going to start. Uh, give me Brown here with the points. They're going to win this game outright, Trey. They've won six in a row. They've covered the spread in six straight games. They've been an underdog in four of the six, and they are dominating teams right now. They're fast. They're athletic. They can hit the three. And most importantly, it's March, and they believe that they can advance. I'm taking Brown with the points. They're going to win this game outright. What do you like? Dang, I mean, both these teams be great teams to get here. Brown – they beat Princeton and Yale. They beat Cornell. Both those teams are, and were, in my opinion, the best teams in the conference. Uh, but this is a lot of points here, seven and a half. But yeah, Brown, they were not very good in the regular season, 13 and seven in the regular season. But they were competitive when it came to conference play, though. And yeah, like Bear said, they're definitely red hot. Uh, I'm talking in circles here. Where will I go? Give me the better team. I'm sorry, Bear. Give me Yale minus six and a half. I feel like at the end of the day, you got to play the better team. And I may be wrong. I may be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure the Ivy League is a home game. So this might be a home game for Yale, and I feel like that's going to be a, a huge momentum as well. So give me Yale minus six and a half. I watched the Brown-Princeton game today. It did not look like it was at Princeton. Oh, okay. Well, I'm almost mind. positive like it wasn't at Princeton. I think it's a neutral court. Does that change your thing or no? It does not. They're still the better team by far. I still Even if it was at Yale, Trey, Brown went into Yale. Last regular season game, 183-81. Give me the Bears. We're going to Hey, I mean, here. it does say this game's in New York, New York, and it doesn't look like uh, – I mean, I, I don't know where Yale's from, so who knows. I don't know. All right, I'll take Brown. You take Yale. We'll split. That's fine there. I like the uh, I like the matchup there for us. Let's go to our place for tomorrow. You've been hot also, so for Yale, Yale's probably going to win. All right, let's take a look at our place. How have you started us off? Yeah, no, I don't know much about that Ivy League game, but I do know a lot about this game. Uh, the Wisconsin oh going up against – Illinois won, and this is going to be a very entertaining game to watch. The Big Ten Championship is going to be a banger, but this spread just does not make any sense, and I just have to pull out my hammer and smash it. Give me Illinois. I'm going to take them minus two and a half in this game. This spread is just too low. I wish the money line wasn't minus 150, maybe minus 130, minus 125, and I would absolutely smash that. But either way, I think Illinois is going to at least win this game by three points, and uh, they're going to command this game from the tip off and then progressively just outscore Wisconsin throughout this game. That's because Illinois, they're the 10th best team in the nation, according to Ken Palm. But that's mostly because of their red hot offense, which is ranked fourth highest in the country, which I think that rating is honestly pretty fair because whenever you look at how they played this season, uh, they make the 24th most field goal attempts per game and shoot the 54th highest percentage in the nation. So that's why they shoot. 84.2 points per game while wisconsin they only averaged 74.7 and i believe wisconsin they're just gonna get beat up because that's what happened yesterday going up against zach Eady, you get beat up and that game went into overtime so i think they're gonna come this game with tired legs as well and whenever we factor in the illinois they have deadly duo in terrence shannon jr and marcus domask 
I think both of them are kind of going to combine for at least 40 plus points. And we're going to watch Illinois at least score 80 plus points here in this game. I don't believe Wisconsin can get to 75. And these two teams, I already played once this year at Wisconsin. Illinois won and covered and scored 91 points. Give me Illinois minus two, uh, two and a half versus Wisconsin. Yeah, I do like to play there. Trey, did you end up, did you watch that Purdue game by any chance? Uh, no, I was driving, but I was heartbroken whenever I saw they lost, but I was happy when I saw ED cashed. Um, Zach Eady might be the luckiest man alive because the refs love him. Uh, Wisconsin had three big guys foul out in this game. Uh, and I'd say a third of those were offensive fouls by ED and none of them were being called. He was literally just trucking people and it was like called on the defense. It was a wild thing to watch. Uh, a lot of people mad about it on Twitter, but well, that's what Shaq says. You know, you can't call fouls because of how massive. The no, 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 no. This what this had nothing to do with his size. Literally Wisconsin guy was just, sta- I think it was Tyler wall on the, his last foul. He was literally just standing in Zach Eady just truck sticks him and they called it on Tyler. Wall. I have no idea. And it wasn't, he didn't even have the ball. He just truck sticked him. I don't know. Uh, I feel like Zach Eady gets a lot of calls. Maybe that'll change come March Madness time. But all right, sorry, moving on. Uh, for my play today, I'm going to try and uh, break the cold spell, going with the team that's trying to make a Cinderella run. Duquesne has made a run all the way to the finals in the A-10 tournament, facing off against VCU, a team I love, who's been very good to me this season. Duquesne is going to try to win this game with their defense because the offense has been pretty bad this season. I think the magical run is going to end here in this game. I'm taking VCU on the money line to take care of business. Again, this Duquesne team is like a lot of the teams in the A-10. They struggle to put up a ton of points, but the one thing they do well is defend. This team is actually in the top 40 in the defensive efficiency on the season, but I don't think it's going to be enough to take down VCU in this game. The Rams this season have been one of the best teams both ways, and sometimes they do struggle on the offensive side, but more times than not, they find ways to put points on the board. The defense has also been great this season for the Rams, and they have fought off the top teams in this conference all season long. VCU has really good wins over Loyola, Chicago, Richmond, Dayton, all the top teams in this conference over the season. And Duquesne is the only team that gave them some trouble this year. They lost the only matchup against them by 10 points at home in their last game. I believe that was a sandwich spot for VCU. They weren't really prepared for that game. They were coming off a game against Richmond. They were preparing for Dayton on deck. Duquesne came in. VCU was unprepared. They took advantage of that. But they are going to be ready for this game against Duquesne. VCU is the better overall team. They do everything a little bit better than Duquesne in almost every single category. I'd like the Ram to hold them off in this game and win the conference title. Give me VCU on the money line as the play there. Trey, let's go to the player props. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm excited to talk about my player prop. I'm actually going back to that Yale game. I'm going to be talking about Danny Wolf to go over 25 and a half PRAs going up against Brown. I really love this over for Wolf in this game because I think we're going to see him dominate in this one, this Ivy League championship game, and Wolf wants to take his team to the NCAA tournament. That is because he's a massive human being. He's a seven-footer that weighs 255 pounds, and he's from Germany, so he loves the bang in the painted area, and that has shown to be true this season. But just in the conference tournament, he has shown out Yale. He's only played one game, and it was against Cornell, and uh, he dominated that game, finishing with 30 PRAs. And Wolf, he played two regular season games against Brown this year, and he averaged 27 PRAs across those games, which is over this number. Wolf, he's going to get fed the ball throughout this one, and we're going to see him score and grab rebounds and dish assists early and often throughout this one. Brown, I'm sorry, Bear, their championship, their championship is going to uh, end here. So give me Danny Wolf to go over 25 and a half PRAs versus Brown. Sorry, I'm looking this up really quick. You said he's seven foot two fifty five. Is that right? Seven foot or two fifty five. There is no way this man is two hundred fifty five pounds. Be seven foot. I'm taking a look. He's got to be pushing two eighty, bro. That hey, is that's a- what ESPN says. Hey, I love it more if he's two eighty. I know that's what I'm player. saying. Like that's such a low weight. I, feel, I mean, he's seven foot tall. He's got to be. He's got to be a little bit bigger than that. But yeah, I like the play. Should uh, dominate the paint there. But Brown's still going to win that game. Uh, for my player prop today, it's going to be Terrence Shannon Jr. of Illinois to go over his total points going up against Wisconsin. The best player so far in the Big Ten Conference Tournament has been Terrence Shannon Jr. He's been on a mission to score as many points as possible in every single game. Coming into the tournament in the regular season, he scored 23-plus points in three of the last four games. And in the tournament, he scored 28 points against Ohio State. He put up a 40-burger against Nebraska yesterday. He shot 50% from the field in that game against Nebraska, and he only needed 22 shots to score 40 points. Very impressive performance. He has been hitting his three-point shots as well, especially over the last six or seven games, making two-plus threes in seven of his last eight games. Wisconsin this season, they do have the capability of playing some defense, but they haven't shown much defense in these Big Ten games against teams who can score points. A random five people off the street can guard Maryland and hold them under 70 points, so that game didn't mean much. But they did give up a ton of points against Purdue. They found a way to win that game. And I feel like this is going to be another shootout between Illinois and Wisconsin. The last time these teams met, 
uh, two weeks ago. Tanner Shan Jr. He had 23 points in that game. The final score is 91 to 83. I expect something very similar in this game. Give me Terrence Shannon Jr. to continue to go over 20 plus points in this game against Wisconsin. Terrence Shannon Jr. over his total points has to play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Check for you over 21 and a half, and I absolutely love that number. It's disrespectful. He's, yeah, he's really going is. for 30. It really is. Love it. And uh, that's because I'm taking Illinois minus two and a half versus Wisconsin. Oh. I think he's going to at least score 30 points, 25 points at the very least. He is a walking bucket. He's trying to force NBA teams to draft him after his you know, run-in with the law. And I think that he's going to be a first-round pick for sure. And I'm also going with Danny Wolf over 25 and a half. PRAs versus Brown. He's going to dominate here, and it's going to show up and show out. Yeah, I'm going VCU on the money line trade. Did we have a number on that? I might have to take the spread. Did you see it? Um, it was, uh, I think, minus two and a half. All right, give me VCU minus. It's probably too expensive on the money line. Give me VCU minus two and a half as the play there against Duquesne. It's and then, minus 130 on the money line. All right, give me, give me the money line again. I'm back on the money line. VCU minus 130. And then Terrence Shannon Jr. over his total points of 21 and a half against Wisconsin. I think that game's going to be a shootout. A lot of points scored. Terrence Shannon Jr., He's a 20-plus point machine. He's going to get that done. Guys, that's going to do it for the NCAA Basketball Plays and Props for Sunday, March 17th, Slated Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Super Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of the subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, BearsProfitPlays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 